on such an auspicious day for Laurel and Amun. On behalf of the Batia and Seal family, we would like to welcome you all to the Milne ceremony, which is in the Indian tradition, the union of the two families by exchanging flower garlands and gifts symbolizing the acceptance of each other's family. Laura has made us proud with everything she's achieved in life, but most especially with her choice of you for a life mate. Amada can clearly see by the way you treasure your family and friends that Laura will be in good hands. And just to make you feel more a part of the family and to honor Tom and Eleanor Carroll and Frank O'Donnell, the Irish grandparents who couldn't be with us today, I'd like to wish you a conglomeration of Irish blessings. May God give you for every storm a rainbow, for every tear a smile, for every care a promise, and a blessing in each trial, a faithful friend to share for every to share, for every sigh a sweet song and an answer for each prayer. May the lilt of Irish laughter lighten every load. May the mist of Irish magic shorten every road. And may your friends and family remember all the favors you are owed. May God be with you and bless you. May you live to see your children's children. May you be poor in misfortune and rich in blessing. May you not know nothing but happiness from this day forward. And given that this wedding is on an island, it only seems fitting to mention that in ancient Ireland, wedding guests were given small stones to cast into the water, making a wish for the couple's future. So if you think of it, the next time you're by the water, pick up a stone, wish a blessing for Laura and Amon, and cast it into the water. Shlante, welcome to the family, Amon. It's wonderful to know you, Patty, <laughs> and your whole family. Yes, when I first met you, Mary, I realized I had a lot a lot to learn about the family. So I'm looking forward to that. as the joining of the hands and the heart as per the Indian tradition. Now, the bride and groom will exchange the garlands. <laughs> the bride and groom everyone. Thank you very much. Let's give a big applause to Aman and Laura 
for celebrating the incredible Orca Island auspicious. I use auspicious because it's the Indian word that he wanted me to use. <laughs> auspicious occasion of the wedding. <laughs> Clap hands. That's all. <laughs> what a beautiful, enchanting place I got to stay. I have to talk about my stay. <laughs> Called Otter Spawn, just for five to six people. And I'm not getting any referral fee. You guys have to see that place. <laughs> uh, it was with nature, beautiful ponds and incredible birds. I forgot about the names of some of the birds, but I can tell you, so much so. And they speak Swahili, Hindi, everything, the birds. <laughs> this little B&B &B is a bounty with natural beauty of flora and font, fauna. I'll briefly share with you Aman's early life, just so briefly because I, we are on time slot, you know that. <laughs> But Aman explored life even before he could walk, which he did very early on. I mean, I can talk about his delivery, but we can cut that off, but he moved fast, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> Thanks to his older sister, Asha, we were frequent visitors to the happiest place on earth. Anyone knows which is the happiest place on earth in Southern California? Disneyland. Disneyland, you got it. <laughs> this guy got a two years free ride thanks to his daughter, I, to his sister and my daughter, because he got away with from two to four. He looked young for a four year old. <laughs> but then I got him five annual passes and he figured out how to get the best rides you know, when the, you know, all those parades become electric parade and all that, that is when we would hit the big rides, you know. <laughs> and then he would be exhausted and he would be on my shoulder. And I have photographs to prove that I had to carry both of these kids, you know. <laughs> what a fun life. So, and then we continued because I put these kids into whatever they wanted. And if they didn't like, like karate, you know, sister liked it. The brother, he would look at me in the back and say, hi, you know, the coach tolerated for two or three things. And then he said, Amman, just be with your dad, you know? <laughs> so that was not for him. With private Turtle Rock Preschool in Irvine, close to where we live in Laguna Beach and in Annalise, which has three beautiful schools. We combined that later on, even with the fabulous Laguna Beach public school system. They continued enjoying both the worlds of the private and the public school while they were still enjoying the Disneyland. Don't forget that, you know, there was time to study and time to have lots of fun. He traveled to many cities, not only in USA, but abroad. And there are too many to mention. Uh, but I'll just mention that one that is so interesting because his buddy, Simon Cordos is here. I don't know where he is, you know. Hey, raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> he looks like a samurai. If he stands up, you'll see that. <laughs> so he traveled, he and his friend traveled first class, Ural train pass, and explored 13 European cities, and they can tell you stories, you know? And you'll forget, you know, and would want to go where they went. Sitting, staying with the families, friends, and couch surfing, and all that. And he's a good cook, by the way. But as a proud father, I have to say at the last speech, the coach was a tough Irish guy. Irish are tough, you know that, right? <laughs> and. He was the first or the third, what was it, uh, when he spoke about you? You were the first or the third guy he spoke, showing basically that this guy went through great strides in his achievements. And that was such a good feeling because if you kids have, if you people have kids going to school, my suggestion, there's no sports like track and field. And if you don't believe, ask him the details, how it up, uplifts you, 
as a team member as well as your own personal best, really. Football will make you like a gorilla and get you more money. And I can go on and on because I can, I'm from the land of cricket and this guy is a cricket here, here, Vijay Merchant. And he can tell you all about it, but I didn't even care for that. The best one is track and field. That's right or not? Yeah. You have to acknowledge, son. Half <laughs> <laughs> where to go. <laughs> no, but you know, now is the nice part. He has a love for music, drama, fine arts, and all that. Knowing all what he and she do, you know, they go whole day, disappear into nature, and gone anywhere. And people worry, are they going to come back from the mountains or wherever they are? <laughs> but honestly, the music that he loves, he and Simon, I'll cut through a lot of it because I have so many cards, you know, but he and Simon, you know, something called serendipity. They invited me to a place in Los Angeles called Sechenoye. I never heard. He didn't even mention Sechenoye. He just gave address and said, Dad, we are performing music and all that. The guy, is, uh, Simon, is good in piano and he's great at guitar and all that. But they love Beatles. You all love Beatles, right? If there is someone who doesn't love Beatles, raise their hand. Because then I'll have to do something. <laughs> so anyway, they played that music. And I then after that, we had a little dinner. Not you know, for an Indian chef, cook, or whatever you call me. I am a gourmet eater. And you know, the, the Sechenoye people don't know much about cooking. But I still sat next to the good Reverend you know, Kawakami. And I, I said, what is this place? He said, it's a church. No, I have been 12 years in Catholic school, two years in Catholic college, and I didn't see the cross. So I knew it couldn't be Catholic. But anyway, cutting short, I found out they just legally put it as church because the same section no ye, which means truth of life, in Japan is called temples. And then I found out it's really not a religious group, it's a spiritual group. I come from India, where when British came, we turn our deities into gods to make it easy because they say, hey, you have to have a god. So we say, okay, we have God Krishna, God Rama, and on and on. But we don't have gods. It's not a religious country. A lot of you may hear that as a surprise, but that's truth. We have deities. So as a young kid, we want knowledge. We say Saraswati, deity of knowledge. If you want money, when you have kids, Lakshmi, you know, and on and on. So I found out the Sechenoye is not a religious group. It's not a propaganda or anything. It's beyond religion, it's spiritual center. I fell in love with it for various reasons, you know, and I don't want to spend much time because we have to get moving on the thing, but Honestly, you should look into the Google and see what it is all about. It's so spiritual. It gets you away from the boundaries that you often put yourself or silos or whatever. So I have to be thankful to those two people to introduce me either through serendipitous way or through destiny because I do believe in destiny. So I've been ever since that and I'm of the Gandhian philosophy of doing that. But at Texas Instrument, they call me the Bengal Tiger because I would bang the desk to get attention, get moving, you know. We had to learn how to accomplish things with all the things. So I found out through Sechunoye so much beauty about spiritual thing. That, that means looking inward and not about your mind and body with all the emotions and all the things that hit you, you know, through the full senses, five senses. So uh, I just wanted to share with you a little bit how I got benefited through my son. It was just not one way channel. He, whether he meant it or not, I got introduced to that and I'm still with that. Every Sunday at Sechenoye, we have the spiritual meeting. Currently because of COVID-19, we do it through Zoom. And believe it or not, this morning, the topic was ceremony of embracing all religions. So 
it's such a thing, you know, and one thing, if you ever go there, and they have both been there to such a new year, you have to repeat thousand times, thank you very much, and the person is saying, why, what did I do? That They embrace you, even if you are going to say something bad, they know that you are going to learn from it. What a beautiful way. I had difficulty saying thank you very much. Forget about thank you also. So it's such a beautiful thing and it gets into you. You know, because it's spirituality, it goes beyond all that and makes all the worries go away. Because if you think about it, you have a full control on your emotions and your uh, all the things that negatively happen because it is within you to control it. And we sometimes blame it on this and this and external thing. So Satya Noye has, had been a great thing for me. And I encourage that and I have to thank, you know, my son and uh, for that greatest gift that I got. So I'll end with the ending prayer that we have. It's just a one sentence prayer. It says, the life of Almighty God permeates the universe, and the universe is thus blessed with perfect peace and grand harmony now and forevermore. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The Lord be with you. It truly is a joy, Aman and Laura, to be able to welcome you with family and so many of your friends who have been able to join each of you and all of us on this glorious day. It's worth the wait, I certainly hope, and it's incredible to be able to share this beautiful space with each of you. I know that uh, each of you have lived here in Washington for the last three years, an incredible opportunity to have so many friends and family to join you in this part of the country that is beautiful and certainly worth the opportunity to be able to join you here today. So Aman and Laura, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends as today in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desires and then fulfill every one of your prayers. Ruth said, do not ask me to abandon or forsake you. Forever you go, I will go. Wherever you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die and there be buried. May the Lord do this to me and more, even if death separates me from you. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith as to so move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand over my body so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude, it does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury, it does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. So, Aman and Laura, when I asked Jesus what he wanted me to be able to share with you today, he told me about his love for his church and his love for you in particular as well. See, God's love is revealed today in particular in what you two are doing. The image that the Bible, the Bible uses more than anything else to be able to talk about God's love for us, you and me, the human race, is the image of a wedding. From the very beginning in Adam and Eve and their marriage to the very end at Revelation and the marriage of Christ and the Lamb, the image that God uses to talk about his love for each of us is the image of a wedding. And so thank you to you, Aman and to Laura, for this opportunity today for you to be this image of God. God's love that is revealed. And again, how perfect in this place that you wanted to be able to share with so many of us. I know that so many of us have already seen pictures of this beautiful place, but so few of us have had the chance to be able to visit you guys here in the West Coast. And how awesome to be able to come to the Pacific Northwest here um, in the San Juan Islands, Orcas Island. Because I don't think the pictures of this place really do it justice. And God's love is so much grander than we can ever imagine. And we can look at the best pictures we have. We can look at the image of a bride and a groom and the pure love that they share and know of how much even greater God's love is for us than the love that Amon and Laura share today. It's incredible, again, throughout the scriptures to see time and again how many places implicitly and explicitly how God's revealing his love through human marriage. How one phrase, the love of a man and a woman in sacrament of marriage can be a little image of Jesus' love for the church. And you two, are, Aman and Laura, are preparing to commit yourselves to this love in a vow today. See, love wants to be able to give itself in a vow. The heart of today, the heart of this entire trip is going to happen in a couple short minutes when in about 90 seconds it's going to take you, as all the time it's going to take you to get through the vows that you have uh, so diligently prepared. Laura, on November 14th, 1993, and Amman on May 16th of last year, 2020, each of you made or had someone make the vows of the promise of baptism for you, or you made those vows yourself. When each of you entered into that relationship with Jesus yourselves. See, each of us are originally created as God's beloved creatures. But through entering into the doors of that first sacrament, the sacrament of baptism, you became beloved sons and beloved daughters of our Heavenly Father. And this sacrament, now that you're entering into the sacrament of holy matrimony, builds on that sacrament of baptism. When already members of God's family, now you turn together to, towards each other. The unity that you share in this sacrament is a unity that's focused and centered on Jesus. Jesus' love for the church is a real love. It's a personal love. And it's so significant for us to be in as close of proximity to the church as COVID will let us, right? But it still is incredible for you to be able to know of your real love for each other. And again, to pattern that love on Jesus' love for the church. Because that's what your vows that you're about to make, that's what they promise. Your vows have 
uh, four key elements, and you might not use these all of these words exactly, but four words to be able to carry with you today. Your vows, you're committing to a love that is faithful, that's fruitful, that's total, and that's free. You promise to accept children lovingly from God. You chose this reading, the two become one flesh, where your love for each other grows and your family grows as well. So that eventually the love that you have is so strong that it, you can give it a name, right? As your family grows and the children that you will lovingly accept come into this world. Your love is fruitful and your love is total. You commit to a wholehearted love Jesus committed to a wholehearted love for his church. St. Paul continues in his letter, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And the way that Jesus loved his church was by spreading open his arms on the cross and dying for her. So it's significant again today for you two to have the crucifix set before you as you make your vows. But in that love, you choose what is best for one another. See, love is far deeper than a simple emotion or a feeling. It would be kind of funny to commit to a loving emotion or feeling today. Of course you have that. It's your wedding day, and that's incredible. But what you vow and your commitment to each other is to choose constantly what is best for each other today and, and every day of your life. A love that truly is better in person know that the times, Amon, when you were deployed are not easy, right? When you're separated from each other. But a love that's better in person is the love that you commit to each other today because you commit to the sacrament. You commit to do this, uh, to enter into this relationship of holy matrimony with each other, to be able to love each other today and every day of your life, and to commit to choose what is best for each other for the rest of your lives. And so Laura and Aman, if the love that you share is ready, uh, has you ready and prepared to commit to this love, please join me in the center of our kneeler to make your vows. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you through a special sacrament. He enriches and strengthens those he has already cons consecrated by holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Aman and Laura, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? I have. Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I do. And are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, join your hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Aman, take you, Laura, to be my lawful wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to cherish and honor, until death do us part. I, Laura, take you, Amun, to be my lawful husband, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health, to cherish and honor until death do us part. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Laura, Laura receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amon, receive this ring as a sign of, sign of my love and fidelity. In and the name, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now you're married. 
for Aman and Laura that their love for each other may be patterned on Christ's love for his bride, the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fruitful love that Aman and Laura will share in God's creative work and enjoy the gift of children, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parents and friends of Aman and Laura, that they will continue to support them on the journey which begins at this church, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those preparing for their marriage day, that they may understand well the dignity and responsibilities of the marriage covenant and family life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For married people everywhere, that they will live lives of love and faithfulness, for better, for worse, in joy or in sorrow, all the days of their lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For health care workers and those they serve, that they receive the healing they need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve and protect our country in the military, that they may be granted strength and courage and always be peacefully reunited with their families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by sea, land, or air, that they reach their destinations in safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those unable to join us from their earthly or eternal dwelling, especially members of the Batia, O'Donnell, Thiel, and Carroll families, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And now let us humbly invoke God's blessing upon this bride and groom, that in his kindness he may favor with his help those on whom he has bestowed the sacrament of matrimony. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman as an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they may no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and the companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with one blessing, that not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants, joined together in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit, and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful in the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter, Laura, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the grace of life, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, May these, your servants, hold fast to the faith and keep your commandments, made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children and prove themselves virtuous parents who live to see their children's children. And grant that, reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. And it's my joy to introduce for the first time my new brother and my sister, Mr. and Mrs. Batya.
Roberts and Simon Cardos. That's the way you rock it, y'all. <laughs> Finally here, after over a year of anticipation in the making, I had all that time to actually write a good speech, but I wisely decided to write it on the plane ride over here. So uh, this is the best it's going to be, and uh, now you're stuck with it. <laughs> Speaking of stuck with it, <laughs> you are now a one combined family. So special thanks to all the family members and, and, and friends. <laughs> for uh, making this today happen. I know what goes into planning a wedding, but no, no, I, I misread that. Whoops. Uh, I know my wife knows what goes into planning a wedding. <laughs> and remember, and I do remember that planning is a major part, but execution really takes a whole village, so we literally couldn't have had today without all of you here, so thank you again. And we are here to celebrate the wonderful marriage between Aman and Laura. Also special shout out, Laura. Congratulations on planning this beautiful weekend. Now you only have one job, and that's to kick back and uh, enjoy the rest of the, your weekend. For those who don't know me, my name is Chris. I've uh, known Aman since elementary school. Uh, sus we suspect uh, preschool. Um, and together, we've been acting like kids ever since. From giggling at the creation of puns and... Uh, Finding adventure in all of, uh, sorry, I got a text message. <laughs> uh, from giggling at the creation of new puns and finding adventure in all of the activities, there are so many stories to count from our travels together, travels together over the decades of our friendship. During that time, I, I've learned a lot about Amon. <laughs> Amon, side note. Congrats on locking up your better 90%. I'd know a thing or two about, you know, marrying up. So, love you, Ali. <laughs> that said, Laura, now that you are married, let me tell you why you... You made the wrong choice. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's a list of things you should know about Amon. 
Number one, he's persuasive. As a testimony of me being in a kurta today, I don't have to tell you how persuasive he can be. I'm only one person, but he has solely uh, managed to convince me to jump out of an airplane, uh, jump off a bridge, and run off a cliff. Just because they're most exhilarating experiences of my life is no excuse. And I can assure you that he will convince you to do equally exhilarating things in your marriage that may just suspiciously be a little too much fun. <laughs> Number two, nature hates Amon. <laughs> Is that too soon? <laughs> Amon's flights have been rerouted by storms. Uh, he's been caught in blizzards while hiking. Uh, he's run through floods. And I suspect that he personally set off two volcanoes on his last deployment. <laughs> the fact is that he enjoys nature. The, the fact that he enjoys nature means you're never going to have a dull moment together. <sighs> Number three, he has too many friends. People love Amon. Allison and I have introduced him to our friends in San Diego, and he constantly gets invitations when we don't. <laughs> all his old friends, a couple of all his military buddies, I mean, that's just way too many names to remember. So, anyways, number four. I, it, goes for, it goes along. With <laughs> number four, he's a man of passion and determination. For all those who don't know, Amon actually left his most lucrative job just to pursue his passion of flight, and didn't let anything get in the way of that. His commitment to his dreams showcases that he will commit to your dreams together, and as a couple, he'll only consider your happiness. I mean, who wants someone that will pursue your happiness together? Ew. Ew. <laughs> Number five, he's a military man. As part of the military, you've, uh, you've been forced to live in many Exotics, and you have and you will be forced to live in many exotic locales. Um, also, there's just too much respect and clout that comes with being in the military. Uh, you'll be required to wear formal attire and bring two sets of whitey tidies or whenever he has to wear his dress whites. There's a story there. But I'm going to make it ambiguous just so you think the worst case scenario. But back to my point. This is going to require you to change up your daily minutia just so that you can travel and attend classy events. No thanks. The list goes on, but I can assure you, if you, were if you were looking forward to a relaxing, dull, and loveless marriage, you made the wrong choice. In all honesty, I, I love this marriage. Laura, I, lo I love you. I love you for your human humor, your intelligence, care, and overall personality, and I love that you love my best friend. You know it's perfect when your strange matches your partner's strange, and I often catch you both laughing for two un in uninterrupted minutes, and <laughs> you, you can't or won't explain the inside jokes you two just shared after go both coming back up for air, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it, that's awesome. <clears throat> you both have already seen the commitment that marriage requires especially when one of your jobs moves you all around the world. So I really have no worries that you will continue to love each other as you're both already battle-tested and made, made it through the long-distance relationship many, many times. With that, I would like to raise a toast. I know that your marriage is special and perfect and look forward to seeing the chapters to come in your lives together because Allie and I will be there. It may be unannounced, but we're bringing breakfast burritos. Cheers. <laughs> okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Claire Idle George, and I have the privilege and honor of being Laura's maid of honor. Fate has actively influenced Laura's life more than once, and I believe fate brought Laura and me together back in 2013. Laura from Wisconsin and myself from Texas both decided to choose Rome to study abroad. We took all of the same classes and our apartments were literally on top of each other. We didn't have the pleasure of being roommates, but very quickly we began walking to school together 
eating pizza and gelato between art classes, drinking coffee and studying our Italian together, as well as weekly shopping at Simply's, our neighborhood grocery store. As fate would have it, our long distance friendship continued and thankfully did not end when we left Italy. Soon we began making yearly trips to Wisconsin and Texas to see each other and meet each other's family and friends. We spent holidays together as well as planned more trips together to new fun places. We've been there for each other through college graduations, new jobs, moving homes, my wedding, this beautiful wedding, and we have a new adventure with my first baby on the way. My husband jokes that I was born when I studied abroad, but the truth is, I grew so much as a person during study abroad because of Laura, and she changed my life for the better. Laura does not fear the unknown and lives to travel and explore the world. Laura does not know fear, and um, her love for travel is just so contagious. She's never not planning an exotic trip, and she's the most adventurous person I know. Fate struck again when Laura went to Florida to visit Brittany, and she just happened to meet him on. I was shocked when Laura mentioned meeting a Navy pilot and that she was flying back out to Florida to see him, but I was also so excited that maybe Laura had met her life travel buddy. As their persistence to get to know each other grew and their frequency to travel to see each other increased, I knew that their relationship was special. Throughout their long distance relationship, they have grown together, traveled together, and overcome hardships together. They're that, cu that couple that I am so jealous of when you look at their travel books because they've explored so many amazing places together. And I know they will continue their journey through life together, exploring every place in the world that they can, creating lifelong memories together. Lauren Amon, even though you're embarking on this adventure of marriage, know that date nights are still a must. Whether it's cooking Argentinian food at home, taking the boat out for a sail or a tugboat tour, <laughs> or playing a board game, dates, date nights are great times to continue to learn about each other, vent about your work week, and spend quality time together because we all know that life gets so crazy. Also, Aman, know that Laura and I have a dream vacation to the Dolomites. So put that in your date night calendar. <laughs> I'm so appreciative to all the family and friends that were able to make it to the ceremonies and celebration today to honor Aman and Laura because they've been waiting too long for this day and they deserve to feel all of the love and happiness from their loved ones today. To conclude my toast, my husband is going to bring up something, and the floor and Amon, if you don't mind coming up here, it is a goblet, it is a goblet hand-carved by EJ, my husband's father, um, and it is an Idol George tradition. The legend of the wedding goblet dates back to the 17th century Celtic tradition. A young man who is courting a young woman goes off into the forest to find a piece of wood that he would shape into a special goblet. The stem would be surrounded by two finely carved rings. The couple would toast one another from the, gar the goblet the unbroken rings symbolizing their bond of strength, unity, and eternal love. So, use your imagination, pretend like I'm showing you bread, but I offer you, this is the toast part, I offer you bread that your household may never know hunger, salt that your life 
may always have flavor, and wine in your goblet, that joy and prosperity may reign in your lives forever. Cheers. Cheers. I asked Bagu after he finished talking earlier, could he uh, share with me the last words in his talk because I thought that's where I'd like to pick up. It's about blessings. The life of Almighty God permeates the universe and the universe is thus blessed with perfect peace and grand harmony now and forever. There's more about blessings and there's a few things in what I have the opportunity to say. I didn't introduce myself, but I think it's been obvious for the past day or forever, for, or uh, way longer, that I'm Laura's dad and now Amon's father-in-law. Um, but a little bit about blessings as we go, but a few other things too. One blessing, uh, when I get to it, is one that Amon specifically asked for. I'm going to start with an aircraft analogy, and then when I get to some sailing analogies that sound similar, then you'll know I'm finally getting to the end. <laughs> an airplane in a hangar is safe, but being safe in a hangar is not what the airplane was built for. That sound like it fits with anybody we know? <laughs> From a distance even, anybody can see that Laura and Amon take care of each other and sometimes they have to do it from a distance. It's the nature of exceptional people to take care of those around them and especially to take care of those closest to them even when they're not in proximity close. Laura and Amon are exceptional people and has already been mentioned a little bit, they draw exceptional people to themselves. I guess I could say starting with their parents and birth families, but that would be shining the light where it doesn't belong. This is Amon and Laura's day. <laughs> but I like the choice they made about the families they're born and married into. <laughs> Some blessings, back to blessings for a moment, come from having the luck of the Irish, and that is a thing that they have in their blood in common before they even met. So I'm fortunate to be honorary Irishman. When I got married to an Irish lady, I got a button from her side of the family that said honorary Irishman. And I wear it with pride even when I'm not wearing it. There's Irish in this room in my family, my wife, my kids, who all know I'm proud of them, each of them. Uh, and all the Irish, wherever I get to find it, including new sides of the family. So another thing we'll get to at the end is another Irish blessing that always I've appreciated since long before I realized I was going to marry an Irish person. So many blessings. We celebrate so many blessings today. Look what happens when Amon and Laura get their friends and relatives together in a place that they agree is suitable. There's so many blessings. In the people that are here, in the day we get to hold this on, in the place we get to have this event. So here's where I'll say the first time, I'll try to keep this short or the next time.
they have appreciation and respect for cultural and religious traditions. And they dive right in. They learn to speak new languages. They learn to move to new dances. They learn to cook together new cuisines. Related to that, one of my favorite quotes combines that with the travel that makes it all happen when you go there to absorb it. Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. Those are words of Mark Twain. Laura and Amon have good judgment. They're sensible and capable people and competent and competitive, speaking of blessings. Because they are resourceful, they are good resources. Because they are, by their nature, on the leading edge, they are, by their nature, leaders. They do big things. They set goals and are persistent in pursuing and achieving them. They are comfortable doing things that are outside of most people's comfort zones. At work in their chosen fields, at play in their chosen adventures, they are comfortable doing things, again, outside of most people's comfort zones. If they were ever bossy, they've outgrown the bossy and simply become good natural leaders by the kind of people they are. And I've heard each of them referred to as bossy. <laughs> At different times maybe in their childhood. And so they've outgrown the bossy and become good natural leaders and likable people and by nature supportive and friendly and helpful. And look at the room full of the kind of people they draw to themselves to get to know each other and to have this kind of a good time together. And let's all hope there's other occasions when many of us or most of us get to share other events with Amon and Laura. Mary gave an Irish blessing before, and I'm not trying to steal anything by also wanting to give an Irish blessing, but it was part of what I was putting together before I knew Mary was going to do an Irish blessing. Speaking of blessings, Amon asked for a blessing from me one time. A couple of years ago on an island, much like this, doesn't it feel much the same? Madeline Island in the Apostle Islands, when uh, Amon, being the kind of guy he is, Speaking of Amon and the kind of guy he is, <laughs> he knew that at some point on this island we were just arriving to, he would be asking Laura to marry him. Before he did that, having respect for cultural traditions, wanted to check in with me about that. If I had any objection, he was prepared to clear up with me any differences I might have had if I had expressed any objection, clear that up, and then ask for my blessing again, and then proceed. That's the kind of guy Amon is. I let him know I had anticipated the question for some time. I didn't take long in doing it. I didn't make him wait too long, did I, Amon? Nah. 
<laughs> I, th I think I told him on then. I know it's how I felt about it at the time. And I reminded myself to tell Laura in case I hadn't told her how I feel about him. If Amon is good enough for Laura, he's good enough for me. And obviously he's good enough for both of us. He's the kind of a guy who makes sure his intended bride is up on enough of her Italian so she'll understand what he's saying when he proposes in Italian. That was good. When I was asked, when it was suggested to me that uh, as father of the bride, I might find myself in a few tears today, I said, I won't be crying. I'm not disappointed for her. <laughs> and I'm not disappointed myself. I learned about Amon and Laura, from, I'm sorry, from Laura about Amon, and then from associating with others as well. Godfather, uncle, I think it would, Laura used the, the, in quotes, he uses those terms loosely. Now you can, if you want, Amon, use the term father or dad loosely if you want as well, too. You'll be a son in my eyes. Back to sailing. A ship in a harbor too is safe, but safe in a harbor is not what the ship was built for. And we can't direct the wind, but we can adjust our sails to it. Any sailor knows there's a whole lot of truth to both of those. And I'm glad you two enjoy sailing adventures. Laura, was your first ride on a sailboat when I was a skipper? Yeah. I was pretty sure it must have been. I enjoy sailing too, and it's fun to see them take it to greater distances. An Irish blessing I appreciate. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind always be at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. That would be if you ever gain any fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. One more blessing to go with that one. May your present day be auspicious. May you share a prosperous future. May anything you cook up be delicious and may you never crash your computers. <laughs> may all sides of your family support you. Any children be your pride and joy and with the light of your life to escort you. May your journey each day be a joy. May truth guide you. May the Lord bless you. May God's light be always with you. May your joys be found in together, caring for others and individually taking care of each other. And may the boat engine be in for maintenance a half hour before the devil knows it's vulnerable. <laughs> Amon came to our house. Was there an overnight involved? The time you came up, Amon, with a truck? in a trailer, and it was halfway between moving literally from one corner of the country to the other. 
Well, he picked up Laura at our place, and the two of them kept going together. The last words I said then are the same words I feel now, and I don't know if you remember them, but it was how well the two of you take care of each other. Aman and Laura, you're so good at it. Keep it up. Take care of each other. So such a magical day and we are man it's it's so so much prep and and so much delay in all of this uh, but we've been blessed with a gorgeous day maybe too hot of a day at some times so thank you for enduring the uh, the, the, the the sweat uh, but uh, but yeah it's it's uh, we are just so happy to have you all here and uh, we can't welcome you all enough. Um, you all are you all are the closest people, and we, we are so happy to have you here. And second, thank you. We are just full of gratefulness in our hearts that each and every one of you made the by plane, boat, or ground transportation to get here, um, and as well to everyone who is a really special part of this day setting up so many touches of this wedding are not our own but from our families and from our friends um, from the ceremonies that have been you know gifted to us and created for us to the programs the music that you've been hearing um, so many touches this hall that's been set up it's it's all from you um, and so thank you it's a wonderful gift to us we um, can't also thank you enough for the ways that you all have taught us how to love it's our starting point and we'll figure it out from here <laughs> thank you <laughs>